Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief, Greg Power. Today we're going to talk about some of the new fishing regulations starting April 1st. Greg, how often has the proclamation changed? That's, uh, North Dakota is unique and uh, we're one of very few states that have a two-year fishing proclamation period. So. We have annually, there's a new season. It begins every year, April 1st through March 31st. But we only uh, address the regulations every two years. And it's critical that this April 1st of 2020, that is that new uh, two-year period. So there are some changes out there. And uh, I should note these changes, the regulation changes. North Dakota has always been uh, trying to keep, we've always tried to keep our regulations simple and straightforward. We don't generally, with one exception, probably in the last 30 years, uh, any of these new proclamation periods, our regula regulation changes are really minor. Uh, there's just maybe a handful of things that we address, uh, but we do, and maybe another thing we should bring in is public input into the, how, do, how does it come to be, you know, how does a new regulation come to be, or why don't we change something? And that, you know, from day one, we, we take public comment and we get phone calls or people make inquiries or face-to-face -face at a meeting or something, ask, you guys need to look at this or change that. Well, we take that serious and we uh, take it under advisement and we discuss it, by, first off, biologically with the biologists. Is it a biological need? And sometimes, usually no, the answer to that is no, but sometimes there is a uh, social need for a change. Uh, Anyways, we get together, the biologists, we get together in the summer, especially going into the fall, come up with a, our suite of new regulation changes or proposed changes, and then we take that out to the fall advisory board meeting, meetings every, you know, every two years uh, for public comment on those proposed changes and go from there. Okay, so the new regulations start April 1st, along with your new fishing license. Right. What are some of these changes? There's a couple lakes added for the no dark house spirit fishing. Yeah, no dark... Again, those regulation changes are few. They're not, so in the big picture, there most anglers are going to go out there. There are no new regulations, but a couple of them, like you mentioned, the dark house spear fishing, we've uh, had a fairly active muskie program, stocking program here in the last five to ten years. And uh, we have stocked muskie into Whitman Dam up in the northeast and Lake Ashtabula. Uh, and those fish now are the size that they could be mistaken for a pike and be speared and we don't want that so we've closed effective next year um, those two lakes have been added to the list of lakes that are closed to dark cow spear fishing still the vast majority of our pike lakes throughout the state are will are open will remain open but those two are added to the list some changes to some of the lakes where smallmouth bass are yeah bass is another thing that's come up here probably in the last five or ten years as it's a little bit of interest with the public. Why can't we take a few more bass out of these lakes? And it, it, that's a minority of people for sure. And, and the reason being, we really didn't have a good reason. Uh, just because it's been, our limit had been three, three smallmouth bass daily. Uh, we know that most people enjoy catching smallmouth bass, but the vast majority that are caught are released. It's a catch and release fish, fishery primarily. We certainly can handle some harvest. Uh, so for those people that would like to harvest them, and, and bass are decent eating, eating fish too. Uh, on our big waters, we're, we're, we're increasing the limit, daily limit to five and the possession to 10. And when I say the big waters, it is truly just the bigger waters. The Missouri River System, uh, Audubon, Darling, Hart Butte, and Ashtabula, I believe, are the only waters that, that the smaller waters, there's a little bit of concern still that you could theoretically over-harvest them or, you know, impact the fishery. So we're just going to look at, for the two years, the big waters and allow the, uh, a little liberalization in the harvest. Okay, some changes to the paddlefish season. Paddlefish season, it seems like that is probably one thing that we do change the most, man. We, over the last 30 years, we're always tweaking the regulations on paddlefish. Uh, the the only change is going to be that we're extending the extended season. So if if we have an extended season, which is a, a snag and release only, uh, we're, we're going to allow a few more days. It was only a four days at the back end. There could be up to seven days of a snag and release, 
and uh, the hours are a couple hours longer so they can go from 7 in the morning to 9 at night. And probably the biggest change is that we're going to expand the area a little bit. It used to be right around the Confluence boat ramp where Missouri and Yellowstone rivers come together. Now we're going to allow it all the way down to what's called Ryder Point, a few miles downstream. So both time and area were uh, expanded at some if we have that ex uh, extended season. Okay, let's move into fish packaging and transporting, some changes there. Yeah, fish, fish fillet transport, again, this issue is, uh, is only going to affect the, the, the people that utilize a fish cleaning station or are away from home. Most people still take their fish home and, and do what they do, and nothing changes in, in that case. But for those that, that uh, maybe at a cabin or, or a weekend camp, camp and use a fish cleaning station, what changes is the way you flay the fish and how, uh, when you transport it home, what's the definition of a fillet. So you're going to have to look at the regulations. We're going to be posting stuff on the website and so forth. Uh, in the scheme of things, not a big deal. Uh, but a few people are going to have to change the way they do things. And, and basically, one fish, you get two fillets. And it's that simple. So a five fish walleye daily limit, that's ten walleye fillets. It seems simple. But some people in the past have zippered the fish, cubed the fish, and that causes problems for the game wardens, and it causes problems for the public that get stopped by the game wardens and, and uh, counting fish and stuff. And there's been a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there's been issues with law enforcement and the public in the past. So trying to clean that up and make it easier for everybody, and uh, they're just going to have to... You still could zipper your fish. If you do that, you end up with having four flays in one fish. You're going to have. You're only going to be able to take home fewer fish. And Greg, some changes to the state record requirements too. Right, and that's policy. That's something that's not even in proclamation or in statute or anything. That's something the game and fish, and my, and I think probably all states have them. But uh, it's more of an information education tool that's used from for many many years. And people are interested in state records. They like big fish. And so the Game of Fish is for, for, again, decades have kept a log of state record fish and the requirements to be a state record. We've really had very little, if any, issues with it over the years. But uh, in the last couple of years, we need to clean up stuff. So there's a couple additional requirements to, if you think you have a state record fish, uh, the process is pretty much the same, but it, there's a couple additional requirements, both internally and, internally and externally, that need to be followed. And again, this will be it's in in the new fishing guide. That those if somebody's lucky enough to think they have a state record fish. It's easy to find what you need to do, and just follow that process. Greg, uh, anglers will notice this year there's a an aquatic nuisance species surcharge when they're buying their license. Well, they may or may not no notice it, it's, uh, but there is. In reality, there is an additional $2 added to a resident fishing license with exception of the senior license and the uh, dis disabled license. There, There's no surcharge there, but $2 for a resident fishing license and $3 for a non-resident, and also $3 for a non-resident waterfall license come ne next fall. And that is that ANS surcharge. It's just added to your normal license. Uh, going towards more ANS work throughout the state, and anglers need to be aware. This is a three, year, the first year of a three-year boat registration right. cycle. Also, yeah. it's a new, yeah, it's a new boat registration cycle. So if you've done stuff online in the past, you, the department reminds you, and you should had notification. If you're new to it, yes, we've gone. You only can do this through the uh, online now to get your boat registration, and included in that. You'll notice that the fee went up slightly. There is also an ANS sur surcharge added to that for the res resident uh, person that's had their boat registered in North Dakota. There's, they'll be paying five dollars more a year for so fifteen dollars for a three-year period for the ANS surcharge. And there's also for the person that has a boat that comes into North Dakota that's not registered in North Dakota. Uh, they will have to have this ANS sticker, and they get that online also, and that's going to cost $15 a year for that one. How has winter been for our lakes around the state, Greg? Oh, in the, in the big picture, we've, I think we'll come out winter in good shape. Winter kill should be far less than last winter. Uh, so the number of lakes, you know, to start with this spring are going to be 
pretty substantial still, and, and the best, probably the best news is we fully expect to have a lot of runoff. I mean, that's bad news for a whole lot of people in North Dakota. We, we realize that the flooding conditions that will probably be, especially in the eastern half of the state, but it's good news for fish in general. It's good news for fish, and uh, moving forward, that perch, especially perch and pike, we're probably going to have good reproduction, and it means good things over the next two, three, four years for fishing. Okay, how are fish populations? How is uh, fishing going to be this spring know, and summer? Fish populations in the state are still good. Uh, maybe not quite where we were three, four, five years ago, but they're still, uh, and we're still in really good shape. And I think, again, we're going to only see them get better over the next few years. And in particular, people are always interested in what we call the big three, uh, Sakakwea, Wahi, Missouri River, and Devil's Lake, and they're all in, in good to very good shape, uh, especially in terms of walleye. Uh, maybe, maybe a fair number of people might get tired, a little tired of catching small walleye, but at least they're catching, I guess. But uh, we're, we're in, as long as we got water, and we have water right now, we're, we're, we're doing well. Okay, new regulations and new fishing license takes place when? April 1st. So, yep, they, you'll see the new fishing guide will be out. And, yeah, make sure you have a new license come April 1st. Okay, and all those regulations will be on our oh, website also. They will be, yes. A lot of great information, Greg. Thank you. you bet. Like Greg just mentioned, you'll need a new fishing license starting April 1st. To view all the rules and regulations, pick up a North Dakota Fishing Guide 2020 to 2022, or you can go to the Game and Fish Department's website at GF. Dot ND, dot gov. For Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.